Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Julian Downward. Uh, Julian received his PhD from the uh, Imperial Cancer Research Fund in London uh, before going on to uh, a postdoc in Bob, Weinberg, Bob Weinberg's lab at the Whitehead Institute. Uh, from there, in 1995, he returned as a faculty member to the ICRF, uh, which has since been renamed the Cancer Research UK London Institute, where he has risen to be its associate director. Uh, Julian has won numerous awards and honors, including uh, being elected as a fellow of the Royal Society and has made seminal contributions in the signal transduction field, particularly in RAS and PI3 kinase signaling. And this is the focus of what he's going to tell us about. Julian. Okay, thank you very much indeed. And um, thanks to all the organizers for this invitation to this very nice symposium. Um, okay, I'll, I'll talk today about some of our work um, focusing on, on RAS principally and um, to some extent on PR3 kinase. Um, RAS, as I'm sure everyone knows, is a, uh, a molecular switch that has assumed a crucial importance in uh, cancer because of the frequency with which it's mutated. Um, So RAS signals between a GTP-bound active state and a GDP-bound inactive state. Um, and this is under the regulation of various uh, inputs, particularly from growth factors acting through guanine nucleotide exchange factors. And there are RAS uh, GTPase activating proteins switching the whole thing off. Um, our continued focus on RAS really is due to the fact that it's the most frequently activated uh, oncogene in human tumors. About 20% of human tumors have activating mutations in one of these three closely related RAS oncogenes. And um, in many ways, many more than that in terms of the number of tumors have, activating, have activated the system. Um, an interesting example of a, a slightly less direct way of, interact, of activating the system is in patients with neurofibromatosis where they have a defect in one of these RAS gaps and they have a, a, a syndrome that includes um, a a um, high rate of malignancies and, and an even high rate of, of benign uh, tumors. Um, but at more distance, the, the system is activated in, in many ways by um, activating of uh, receptor tyrosine kinases upstream and autocrine production of growth factors and so on. Um, RAS, I think, has a, a particularly key role in um, controlling the, the growth of uh, of tumors because it sits at the top of a, of a number of signaling pathways, uh, which gives it a potency that goes beyond what some of the um, oncogenes acting further downstream can achieve. So RAS actually sits at the top of two key uh, oncogenic pathways, the RAFMAP kinase pathway and the PR3 kinase AKT pathway, uh, being able to regulate the activity in both of those directly through interaction of RAS with RAS binding domains on, on these two families of proteins, plus there are various other effectors that it interacts with, some of which may have important roles in cancer, particularly this RAL GDS. Um, I will talk a bit more about the PR3 kinase link in particular, and just to sort of say by way of introduction to that, that um, PR3 kinase, which is shown here as the regulatory subunit P85 and the catalytic subunit P110, is controlled by uh, receptor tyrosine kinases and, and other stimuli, uh, which cause um, the recruitment of the uh, regulatory subunit P85 to the receptors or to adapt to proteins uh, assembling on the receptors. Uh, and in the case of RAS, what it's doing is actually, whilst this interaction is happening with the receptors, the RAS is actually binding to um, the catalytic subunit. The RAS is also being activated by this whole component, so there are two ways in which this activation feeds in to RAS itself. Uh, to PR3 kinase itself. Downstream of, of all of the signaling, um, the impact on the, the various characteristics of tumor cells is profound with RAS, with it affecting most of the things we've come to think of as um, characteristics of cancer cells. Um, and I'll tell you today about, um, firstly, about some work on a, a mouse model of, of looking at one of these particular interactions, the, the interaction of RAS with PR3 kinase and how important it is in tumor genesis. Um, in, a, in a rather more physiologically relevant system than has <clears throat> previously been looked at. And then I'll tell you about 
our attempts to try to find other ways in which we can get at uh, RAS mutant tumors, given the problems that have uh, been found in targeting RAS directly itself, uh, and its acquired sort of status as a, a more or less undruggable uh, protein. So firstly, the importance of this interaction of RAS with PR3 kinase, which I mentioned. Um, now, we found that many years ago, and um, it was at a time when the uh, pathways downstream of RAS, and particularly this RAF map kinase pathway, was being established in parallel by people working in mammalian cells and culture and by people working in uh, developmental um, genetics in um, flies and worms. And it was striking to me that whilst it was quite easy to find a number of alternative RAS effectors to RAF quite quickly, as my lab did, um, the um, ability of RAS to interact with some of these alternative effectors showed up in the mammalian systems very well, but not in the um, genetic systems in, in flies and worms and others. So there was questions as to whether or not these were really real interactions or whether they were in vitro artifacts. And the work I'll tell you about has been um, done by these individuals in my lab, particularly Tony Ramjan, and Serbi Gupta, done the most work on this. So what Tony did was he set out to make a mouse in which that interaction couldn't occur. So we're really looking to, to characterize this, the importance of that specific interaction. And we did this on the basis of structure um, done by Roger Williams of RAS bound to the, the PR3 kinase gamma um, subunit. There are, th there are four isoforms of the catalytic subunit of the type 1 PR3 kinases. And um, we actually made the mutations based on this structure, but we made them in the alpha subunit, which is ubiquitously expressed, the is alpha isoform, which is ubiquitously expressed, whereas gamma is not. Um, and alpha has subsequently been shown to be an oncogene in its own right, and that is frequently mutated in human tumors. Those are the two mutations we made that disrupt that interaction. And the effect of this um, on, well, first of all, looking at cells from, derived from these mice uh, was that in some way we partially uncouple signaling from um, growth factor, some growth factor receptors to downstream players like uh, PR3 kinase uh, and things downstream of PR3 kinase such as AKT. And here you see in the wild type MEFs, um, EGF, uh, a dose response to EGF showing activation of AKT. And in the case of the mutant MEFs, um, that is attenuated strongly, um, but there's still some signaling. Um, you don't see this with other um, growth factors um, such as PDGF, so it depends on the exact system you're looking at. But the effect with EGF is quite profound. Um, we can also more artificially activate the pathway by um, switching on RAS with an inducible form of RAS, a uh, post-translation inducible form of RAS, and that's shown over here, uh, activating AKT on PR3 kinase in the wild type cells, but not in the mutant cells. Um, so there's a uncoupling, a partial uncoupling of the growth factor receptors from the downstream PR3 kinase signaling, showing that the RAS PR3 kinase interaction is important, at least in some of these uh, growth factors' ability to activate uh, PR3 kinase. Um, interestingly, the phenotype of the mice showed you might expect that you might see some EGF related phenotype based on how attenuated this signaling was, but actually that was not the case. There was no hint of an EGF-like uh, phenotype. We did, however, see a phenotype that was um, involved in lymphangiogenesis development, was delayed, uh, which we looked into further, and I won't show the data on this, but this was actually linked to an uncoupling that was yet more severe than the EGF uncoupling of um, the VEGF-C, from Ve uh, which acts through VEGF-R3, which was really completely uh, relieved of its ability to activate PR3 kinase. So very dependent on exactly what growth factor system one's looking at there. Um, the, in terms of transformation, um, in vitro transformation, the uh, mutant cells, mutant immortalized MEFs, were not transformable by RAS or by some things acting upstream of RAS, like activated EGF receptor or, or a B2, but other things... Um, were able to transform them normally, polyomidyl T shown there. Polyomidyl T we know acts through both, requires both PR3 kinase and RAS, but doesn't seem to require the link between them. Um, and in terms of actually in the mice, tumor genesis in the mice, we looked at um, putting these mice onto um, a RAS model. This is what, um, the KRAS LA2 model made by Tyler Jacks many years back, uh, in which 
the, the sporadic activation of, of the expression of an activated allium of KRAS off its own promoter, and these mice get a lot of lung tumors. Uh, and on our mutant background, they really don't get any lung tumors at all, or, or maybe one. Um, they go on to live actually a few months beyond, so normally these mice would have to be killed by six months of age due to the tumor burden in the lung. The ones on the PR3 kinase mutant background um, live a few months beyond that, but they then come down with T cell lymphomas um, in which we see the expression of the activated KRAS allele. Um, and also, although we haven't formally proved that it's signaling through P110 delta, they, those cells are expressing a lot of P110 delta, so we assume that's why they, they um, uh, can grow up because they're not dependent on the P110 alpha interaction. Um, the, another point with these mice is that they actually have, um, as, as they, get, as they um, get towards the time that they're beginning to die off from the lung tumors, you see a hyperproliferation in the gut, um, but it's not, it's, it doesn't um, turn into a, a frank malignancy. Uh, and the extra life span that you get by putting on this um, mutation uh, doesn't appear to alter that. So these, you still see that, and the hyperproliferation is still happening, but it doesn't progress during that time to a, a frank malignancy. We've also looked at this with a um, skin carcinogenesis protocol, and this is just showing that this is the normal um, DMBA TPA protocol giving uh, papilloma formation in, in the wild type mice um, due to activation of the endogenous HRAS gene. And um, in the case of on our mutant background, we really get no tumor formation at all. So this interaction is, is clearly critical in, um, in tumor formation uh, when we're looking at just the endogenous RAS and endogenous PR3 kinase levels. Um, <clears throat> there's questions as to whether or not the interaction is required for tumor maintenance as well as formation, and we have inducible versions of these um, mutations now, which um, I was hoping I might be able to have the results of those in time for this meeting, but actually the, the mice have not quite cooperated, and we should know that pretty soon, where we allow the tumors to form, the ras tumors to form, and then take out the, PR3, the interaction with PR3 kinase through induction of the mutant allele. Um, I think a big, a big issue with PR3 kinase now in, in, um, and RAS in the clinic is whether or not one can effectively target RAS uh, tumors by targeting together targeting PR3 kinase and MEC uh, using the inhibitors that have been developed against these. And um, so this paper reports that in mice um, about 18 months ago, um, pr promising work in, in mouse uh, lung tumors, rest driven lung tumors, that you could be targeting those effectively with combining the inhibition of PR3 kinase and the uh, pathway. Um, but whether or not this will be uh, tractable in the human system, I think, is, is, is an issue, and in particular, the question of what the toxicity of these combinations are likely to be. Um, it's possible that if these combinations too, prove too toxic, that targeting interaction of RAS with PR3 kinase may be a, a less uh, toxic way of inhibiting the function of uh, the ability of RAS to target PR3 kinase and might be an alternative option to follow uh, clinically. <clears throat> 